sorry, uncivilized vitality in the uh, working towards your knot bead. This video will be knots and loops. Okay, so you got your uh, your hanger rope. So you're gonna practice with. I'm using the Paramax. I grab the brown. Hopefully this light, you'll be able to see it. So a knot is anything in the end of your rope to keep it from unraveling or to keep it from pulling through um, another knot or a bind or uh, just for something to hold on to. Sometimes called stopper knots. The easiest knot to tie is the overhand knot. Where I just go, I make an overhand loop. I'll try to do it from your perspective. And then I just take the working end and run it through that loop I made. That's it. The standard overhand knot or pretzel knot. That's a stopper knot. Then the knot can't pull through anywhere. It can cinch down pretty tight and sometimes it's hard to untie. But it is the basic uh, knot that people know. So the overhand knot. I can also do, instead of going through once, I could go through again and do a double overhand knot. And then when I tighten that down, and dress that knot up, I've got a slightly bigger knot that holds at the end. I actually um, prefer the double overhand stopper knot. This one can be a bit of a bear to untie. So the overhand knot and the double overhand knot. You can also tie a figure eight just in the end of your rope. All right, so you get your bite and you run your working end around your bite and then through the bite from the side facing you and pull into your familiar little figure eight. And now that's a stopper knot. So that again, it keeps the knot rope from unraveling or you can hold on to it or it keeps it from um, pulling through another knot. So overhand, double overhand, figure eight, very common stopper knots. Uh, another one is the Ashley stopper knot. So you'll make an underhand loop with your free end, underhand loop. And then you take the standing end and you're gonna put a bite up through that, making sort of a slipped overhand knot. Pull that tight, run this all the way around and through. And then when you pull that down, tighten it up, you've made the Ashley stopper knot. You can tell that's sometimes called the Oysterman's knot. If you look at it from the standing end part, you see that three, the overlapping uh, trifoil shape at the bottom. So it's an Oysterman knot or a Ashley stopper knot. Also very handy. I like that one as well. So the overhand, double overhand, figure eight, and Ashley stopper knots. Those are probably enough to get you through... Uh, on the end of ropes. Uh, another thing, and this is just terminology, is you can make a slipped overhand. So instead of tucking the free end through that loop I made, I just fold a bite of the free end through and pull it down. And you can see that that's the, the start of the Oysterman or Ashley stopper knot, but it's just a slipped overhand knot. You can slip any knot or hitch or bind uh, or loop even by just folding a bite through instead of the free end. Now it's slipped because I can pull that free end and it'll slip back free and come undone. So those are the stopper knots. So uh, just a few, most people are gonna, you could even tie those on a bite. So here's an overhand knot on a bite. So now I've made an overhand knot on a bite. I'm gonna dress it up a little bit. So that's just an overhand knot on a bite uh, instead of a, on the end. I can make a figure eight on a bite by making a second bite, going all the way around and tucking the end up through there. And now I've made a figure eight on a bite as a bigger stopper knot. I can do the same thing with the Ashley's, but let's uh, keep moving. So those are some basic stopper knots you'll need. Now, a lot of times you're gonna need a basic loop. So an un there's obviously thousands of knots and different loops. Uncivilized Vitality for your knot bead, I'm just going to give you five um, basics. So the first one you're going to want to be able to uh, use is sort of a, a, a slipped knot at the end, but it's going to form a loop you can adjust, and it's called a simple noose, okay? or sometimes people call that a slip knot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my overhand okay, like that, and then I'm going to push that bite up through. And when I pull it down, we just talked about this being the slipped stopper knot. But you see that if I have a big enough bite, I can adjust that through there so I can I can adjust the size of that loop. Now, if the loop pulls through, I end up with just an overhand. So instead of pushing the free end through, when you make your, your um, 
simple noose is you're going to make your loop, you can do an overhand, and then you're going to pull a bite of the standing end of the rope through. Now I've made basically an overhand knot and then I ran a piece of the standing end through the overhand knot. Once I tighten that down, I now again have my adjustable adjustable loop. I can make the loop bigger. I can make the loop smaller. I've made a slip knot uh, or the proper term is a simple noose or a basic slip knot. And I've done that on the standing end, not the free end. If I wanted to secure that a little further, I could do, I can make a half hitch uh, or pile another overhand knot further down the line. Okay. If I do that with a little more planning, I will have what's called the uh, hunter's noose or uh, poacher's knot. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my loop. I'm going to take my free end over my standing end and then over itself. So I end up forming this X and then I'm going to come up one more time and I'm going to tuck the free end down under both turns. Now when I pull that, I'll get that characteristic X. Okay. Now I've got the same thing. I've got a noose or a simple noose that can slip or a slipped knot. But I've basically tied a double overhand on this end instead of a single overhand for the simple simple noose. This is called the poacher's noose or the poacher's knot or the poacher's loop. Right. Now, the good thing about this is if nothing's in the loop, I can just pull the standing end and just pull the knot right apart and it'll just come right through it. All right, one more time with that. Okay. I make a bite. I take the free end or the working end over and then over a second time. So basically I went over itself in the standing line again. And now I'm gonna go over the standing line and tuck the free end under both throws. Tighten that knot down. And then I've got my poacher's noose or poacher's loop. Okay. If I were to wrap, let's say a bigger line, or bigger loop and I go around once twice and then I tuck through that barrel on the third time now I've got three throws one two three over there and now I've made what's called a scaffold knot and the scaffold knot or scaffold loop right again is same as the simple noose one throw the poachers uh, noose or loop two throws and this is the scaffold knot. And then I guess you could go four throws, three throws, um, <clears throat> any any number of throws. Traditionally, if you were to put 13 wraps or 13 throws around it, that would be called the hangman's noose. And uh, just so YouTube doesn't lose their shit, I'm not going to put that on here. So those are the first two easy loops if you need an adjustable loop. But do be aware that the, the nooses or um, poacher's loops, scaffold loops, will collapse down really, really tight on something. Those are never to be used. Uh, around any part of your body um, or anything you might not want that rope stuck on. The proper loop you're going to use most of the time is, of course, the one we all know and love, the bowling. So I'm going to make an overhand loop and I'm going to hold that loop, pinch that with my fingers where it crosses over the standing part of my line. I like to fold the knot horizontally because it helps people with the story. Then I take the tag end, I come up through that loop from below, I go around behind the standing end making a bite around the standing end right back through that initial hole along my path pinching the tag end and its um, body and then pulling to form my bowling All right the bowling is probably going to be if you master one loop that's going to be the one you want because you can use the bowling over and over scaffold not super easy uh, as well but it um, has fewer uses than a, a simple bowling. Now maybe you don't like the bowling. You can also make, with a larger bite, you can do, just like we did earlier for a stopper knot, I fold my bite into a bite. I wrap that loop around toward me again and tuck through and now I've made a loop that we used earlier as the figure eight on a bite, but now I've got a figure eight as a loop. This is a very, very secure knot, and this is, I can finish it up by with just a little overhand security knot. This is the knot you use, um, probably most familiar, familiar to most people, I guess, familiarly, that's not even a word, 
in uh, rock climbing. So just when you clip your carabiner in, this knot will not come undone. It will not fail. And it's usually pretty easy to untie after it's been loaded. Uh, the bowlin can come undone, so that's why it's not a life-saving knot. The figure eight on a bite, or the figure eight loop, life-saving knot. Not quick to tie, maybe for uh, bushcrafty stuff while we stick with the bowlin. Let's say you don't have enough rope to, to wrap that over, or you have to go around something before you close that loop. Real simple, take a long enough uh, free end, okay, run around, make your figure eight. Right, so I've got my figure eight, I keep the knot kind of loose. Then I run my line, the free end around when I, I need to get under, maybe I don't have a carabiner. I just run that under my um, the harness or around the, the tree or the person. Then I take the free end and I just follow, get the loop the size I want, maybe that's around it. I follow, I trace the figure eight knot back through by following it all the way around. See where it goes there? And I followed it back through, so then I just traced it. That's called a follow through figure eight. And you can see it's exactly the same knot I tied on the bite. And then I could, heel, I could tie this off again with an overhand. It's the exact same knot we tied before. It's just a different way to tie it. If I don't have the ability to form the loop first and hook it on something, I need to form the loop around something. All right, so you have the uh, slipped slip knot, slipped knot, or uh, simple noose. You have a poacher's knot, poacher's noose, a scaffold knot, which is just a uh, further throws. The bowline, which is the one I'm going to prefer you use. Figure eight, either figure eight on a bite or pass through figure eight. And the last one would be um, the perfection loop. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to make an overhand loop so the tag ends running back toward you. Then you're going to make another loop. Right? Lay it on top of that first one by going over top of the standing end. So now I've got loop one, the original loop, and then loop two formed by passing the free end over again. Does that make sense? So they kind of overlap. So I got one loop, two loops. Then I take that free end and I'm going to push it up between the two loops and just sort of keep that out of the way. Now I push loop two up through loop one, and then I pull on the standing end and tighten every, dress everything down. And I've got my angler's loop or perfection loop. Okay? This is a good loop because it runs straight in line okay, with your standing end. It's got that little bit of a uh, little oops run that, by there. that little bit of a tag end sticking out so you have loop one okay. and you go over again and form loop two okay. loop one first loop loop two by going over again I'm keeping them pinched I lay that work that uh, free end between the two loops and then I can kind of pinch it with my finger out of the way so see I have loop one loop two and the standing and lying between and then I push loop two up through, dress that knot up by pulling, and I've got my angler's loop. And just like the bowlin, uh, even though it's been loaded under a lot of pressure, it's fairly easy to break this angler's loop or perfection loop just by pushing on that little bend there, kind of pushing the, the second loop back through. Okay. You know what, now that I think about it, the first one I might have tied upside down, but let's do it again, just so we can make sure. Okay. So you have the first loop I make by running that free end down behind my standing end. Then I do the same thing, run down behind the standing end again and make a second loop that lies over top of the first loop. You can even separate them a little if you want. First loop, second loop. Then you lie the standing end between the two loops. Run that second loop up through the first loop. And then you get your angler's loop or perfection loop. Now the, the bigger loop you need, the bigger that second loop needs to be. The bigger your end result you want, the, the bigger the second loop needs to be. So if I want a bigger one, I get my loop and then I make a really big second loop. Dress them up, lay that standing end between the two, tuck that second loop through loop number one, pull it all the way up there, dress it down, and now I've got a larger perfection loop. Okay. 
So those would be the five loops you need to work on. Uh, I might ask you for, at times, to use a slip knot uh, or a poachers or scaffold knot, sorry, loop. Um, most of the time I'm going to ask you just to just do a simple figure eight uh, loop, a bowline or an angler's loop, perfection loop. So uh, practice your knots, practice your loops, and then get ready to demonstrate those um, at camp. Not only to use that to set up your shelter and for daily tasks, but to uh, earn that knot bead. So that's it. Uh, if you like this, make sure you share the channel, like, and subscribe. Uh, leave some comments below. And uh, I think that's it.